Have you ever accepted a job that you just weren't qualified for? I know I have. In fact, some of you in the comments might argue that I'm not even qualified for the job I have right now. When it comes down to it, there are two different ways to be unqualified for a job. First, you have the fake it till you make it. Now this is extremely common, and sometimes this works out extremely well for the faker. I know in my career, whenever I was pretending to know how to do something and then suddenly was expected to do it, I would simply say something like, in my last job, we did this way different. Can you show me how we do it here? Boom, on the job training without looking like an idiot. Then again, sometimes pretending to know how to do a job doesn't work out so well. Back in the 80s, my grandfather had a machine shop and my dad did some work there. Eventually, my dad needed better pay, so he went out looking for a job. He found a place that was looking for a master die maker, and the pay was great. So like any good faker would, he forged his tool and die certificate and applied for the job. Shortly after he was hired, his manager gave him a few punches to put rooftops on. Now, I'm not a die maker, but my understanding is that a rooftop is a very slight angle put on the face of a punch so that when the die is struck, the pressure required to shear the part is reduced. My dad, being a logical thinker, pictured the roof of a house and put something like a 20 degree angle on the face of the punches. When my dad gave them back to his manager, he tripped out and was like, what is this? I said rooftops, not a freaking 45. My dad, not wanting to look dumb, said, trust me, try it. The punches not only worked, but they worked better than the old ones. Now by this time, all the guys on the shop floor knew that my dad had no idea what he was doing and they were all slightly annoyed to be explaining to him how to do his job every day. So you can imagine how happy they all were when the manager called everyone over and said, this guy knows what he's doing. From now on, he is your supervisor and you're all going to do whatever he says. With the entire shop irate, my dad ended up having to take what he had learned there and he moved on to other jobs before eventually starting his own machine shop. Fast forward about 20 years, and I myself was working as a machinist. I had spent a few years as a glorified button pusher at my dad's shop, and had a few jobs as a programmer on water jets, lasers, turret punches, and robots. When it came to machining, I was pretty green. I could program simple three-axis parts, but that was about it. The company I worked for at the time bought a new five-axis mill and needed to make a bunch of different impellers. My boss asked if I wanted to learn 5-axis, and I never turned down an opportunity to learn something new, so of course I said yes. I mean, I knew 3-axis, so how much harder could it be? Well, I was in for a lesson in biting off more than you can chew, and discovered that impeller work can be a lot harder than 3-axis work. I spent the next two years of my life feeling overwhelmed. I remember thinking to myself that I should just give up because I just wasn't smart enough for this. The tolerances were crazy, and to make it worse, the blades would droop as you machined them, so you had to predict how much the blades would fall and then compensate for that in your program. It's funny because this was around 15 or 20 years ago, but I can still remember the part numbers and many of the dimensions from these things. Anyway, I had to learn three new CAM softwares, Mastercam, Concepts NREC, and Camplete, as well as simulation software. Add to that some problems with outsourced processes that we didn't even know about till much later, and these parts were a nightmare. In the end, I learned a lot, and the knowledge I gained during that journey helped tremendously over the years. So what's my point? Well, there's a few takeaways from this story. There's a difference between faking it till you make it, biting off more than you can chew, and a little bit of imposter syndrome. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, the wisdom required to differentiate between these comes with time and experience. Generally speaking, it's not a good idea to jump into a trade that you know very little about and think that you can just fake it till you make it. The people that know their stuff will see right through you and you can end up making some very costly mistakes. When it comes to biting off more than you can chew, it can be very hard to recognize it's happening until it's too late. All you can really do is give each opportunity a thorough assessment and make sure that you're fully prepared to put in the work and that you'll have the support required to see it through. Never give up no matter how stressful it gets, and even if you fail, you'll never lose the lessons learned in the attempt. And anyone that's worth their salt will be touched with imposter syndrome at some point. Thinking to yourself, wow, I'm really not that good at this, is healthy, and no matter how confident or competent you are, thinking this way will keep you humble and open-minded. Being an expert doesn't necessarily mean that you know everything, it just means you know a lot, have seen a lot, and what you don't know you can usually figure out or learn. 
So keep rising to greatness, chase down the challenges, be hungry for knowledge, work hard, work smart, and hopefully you don't bite off more than you can chew. Have you ever felt like you were in over your head or that you got into something that you weren't qualified for? If so, I'd love to hear your story, so leave it in the comments below.